Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. As you can see, I'm once again in my granddaughter slash guest bedroom upstairs. My husband is recording a video in his office and I didn't want the sound to interfere. So it is Sunday, January the 8th. My husband and I will be viewing church from online again because mama's not ready to get out of the house and I'm not comfortable leaving her alone for several hours just yet. So next week we're making plans to return to regular church and I'm really looking forward to that. So glad I can watch church online. Oh, so wonderful. Now um, it is, as I said, Sunday, January 8th. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And I have really been loving this. Every day there's a little something that we can trust God to do in our lives. I was reading um, Proverbs 8 this morning, because if you read a proverb a day, there's 31 of them. You can have wisdom every single day. And the urgency in Proverbs 8 to seek wisdom, to seek it, because that's where common sense, that's where sound judgment comes from. I mean, and then the blessing that is accompanied, it's more valuable than gold and silver. I was like, Lord, help me to grasp this. I really urge you to read Proverbs 8 today. It'll lift you up. Okay, our devotion today is entitled, uh, Take Care of What God Has Given You. Okay, I like this. Our uh, scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, Do you not know that your body is the temple the very sanctuary of the holy spirit who lives within you whom you have received as a gift from god you are not your own i needed to hear this one today because i have kind of been loosey-goosey with the sugar and carbs this past holiday season and i'm sure you can probably see it in my face what if you went to church and it was run down Peeling paint, broken doors, smudged windows that didn't let the sunlight in. You'd wonder about the pastor, wouldn't you? The church is his instrument for celebrating the glory of God. Yet, if he doesn't respect the church enough to take the time to keep it in good condition, what does this say about his relationship with God? The same question applies to your own body. Taking care of the body God has given you is the most important kind of home maintenance. It's the most important kind that you can do. Your body is the home of your spirit where God dwells. <clears throat> to do the work you were meant to do, you need to keep it in good shape. This is, this is going to touch a lot of people. We're at the beginning of the year where we can make choices and changes that are for our benefit. I still have to remind myself of this. Once I hurt my voice by speaking in a seminar with an extremely sore throat. That morning when I woke up, I knew I shouldn't speak, but I thought about the disappointment of the audience if I didn't. So I forced myself to speak, but the next day I could not make a sound. I couldn't the next day either or the day after that. The condition continued and I began to worry. I finally went to the doctor who told me I had damaged my vocal cords by not by speaking when she had a sore throat. My gosh. He said, each time we push ourselves beyond reasonable limits, we do some damage. And if we do it too often, we get to a point where we can't recover. He said, it might reach a point where I could not teach at all if I did not respect my voice and take care of it. I nearly jeopardized my entire public ministry. If I had permanently damaged my voice, I would have wound up helping far fewer people in derailing my life's calling. Now I'm more careful about protecting the tools I need to do God's work. My voice, my mind, my heart, my emotions, and my body. Please take care of yourself so you can glorify God and do all that he has intended for you to do. Boy, this is just a reminder to me because I'm one of those go, go, go kind of people. I don't like sitting idle. 
uh, even if I feel an ache and a pain, but I have somewhat good energy, I'll like, okay, I'll pop some ibuprofen and I'll just keep going, going, going. And I've been learning that I need to listen and rest when I'm feeling the need to rest. And I've been trying to be a little bit more mindful of that. And this also, and she may get into this later on, but I'm just going to say it now, even though she was talking about, you know, paying attention to an injury and not pushing yourself beyond the correct limit. Um, it's important that you protect your health. Okay. We're at the time of year, the beginning of the year when everybody's like, okay, okay, I need to lose weight. I need to get into better shape. Okay, get out of that mindset and get into the mindset of stewardship of your health, okay? Not adopting a million things to do at once because you get discouraged because it's too hard to keep up with, okay? Making choices, some simple swap outs like drinking more water instead of soda or just think of the liquids that you consume. If you're already doing water, you're doing great. But a lot of us struggle with the water thing. Okay, that could be a simple swap out. And I shared this in previous devotions. I don't remember where, but I'll just say it again. When I knew I needed to get more water into me, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to stop drinking the diet drinks altogether, but that was all I was drinking, coffee, and then I went right to Diet Coke. He said, <clears throat> have your Diet Coke. But before you have one, I want you to drink an equal amount of water. So if I'm drinking a 20 ounce bottle of Diet Coke, before I could drink that, I had to drink 20 ounces of water. And then the next time I wanted a drink, I could have the Diet Coke. And the next time after that, water, then Coke, then water, then Coke. That's what he was basically telling me. And I said, okay. So I started doing that and I was drinking less and less Coke because the water was satisfying the thirst. <laughs> and so I got into more of a habit of drinking the water, doing a simple swap out. And I know they have the add-ins and those things are okay. I would really urge you, <laughs> urge you to try drinking the clear water. It, you would be amazed at what it does to your mind to your body, to your organs, to your skin. It's a little thing that you can do that will preserve your health. What you're doing now is investing in the health that you will have as an older person. Okay, that's how I look at it. Because if you treat your body poorly now, you are not going to have the ability to walk or to do things independently as an older person. Also getting up and moving. You don't have to prepare for the Boston Marathon, but it's important. And if you need some accountability, get you one of these to remind you to do your 10, at least a 10,000 steps in a day. And if you, you've never done that, work towards it. Set it as a goal for yourself. Not like, oh, well, I didn't make it. Oh, well, you have to really kind of push and find those places. Get the Holy Spirit's help. Because he wants you to be equipped physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for the work that he has for you. You were not just created to take, take up space on the planet. Everybody's been given a gift. Everybody has been given abilities and things that they do that are meant to not only bless their lives with interesting things, with a way to make money for yourself, but also a means of blessing the kingdom of God in the body of Christ. All of us were. God forgive me for the time I wasted when I wasn't walking with Christ and those gifts were being denied to the body. But <clears throat> he wants you to function in good health. Good health. If, you're do if you are engaging in habits that are destructive to your health, stop them. Okay? Not for religious do's and don'ts, check the boxes, and I'm if I stop doing this, I'm going to go to heaven. Get those thoughts out of your head. Just be a good steward because you can't do anything to earn heaven. That's a gift by grace. But do those things within yourself that are healthy for your spirit, your body, your mind. Okay? And do them as you're led by the Holy Spirit to do them. Do them one thing at a time. Start maybe with the water. Start maybe with getting off sugar. 
you know, pick something. Ask the Lord, what do I need to, if you're smoking, ask the Lord's help to stop it. You see what I'm saying? There are things that you can do, not because smoking is going to get you, put you in hell, as some people try to say, is because it's destructive to your lungs. It takes away your ability to breathe. I'm a fan of breathing, okay? <laughs> things like that. A lot of people, when you start engaging in healthy habits, they try to say you're being religious. I'm not being religious, okay? <laughs> this is just common sense. Wisdom. Read chapter eight of Proverbs. <laughs> common sense, all right? You're not pursuing a, a want of the flesh, which is like an addiction to nicotine. You're pursuing the things of the spirit, which bring you life and health, all right? Now, and that's taking care of what you have. So you have everything that you need to do what God puts you here to do. All right. Trust in him. How can you take better care of your body? The place where God dwells. Show God you love him and trust him by taking good care of your temple. Oh, thank you, Lord. Forgive me for neglecting and abusing my body this holiday season with all that sugar and carbs that I ate. Yeah, let's pray because I know that this can be a tough one for some people. They're so used to just answering the, the yearnings of their flesh with their appetite, eating a lot of junk that doesn't nourish your body at all. Okay. It's easy, quick, delightfully delicious because if it wasn't delicious why would you eat it right we need help we need god's help let's pray <clears throat> father in the name of jesus i thank you for this word today lord that i needed to hear i have not been treating my body well i've eaten too much sugar too many carbs and have uh, not paid attention to the things I should be eating. I ask you right now to help me, oh God, to lay aside those things that although they taste great, are not great for my body or my health. I thank you, Lord. I don't want to take for granted my health. I want, oh God, to glorify you and to be a good steward of this body, that I would get up and move, that I would nourish it, Father, with the things that it needs to function well. Father, I ask that you break any addictions in my body, addictions to sugar, addictions to carb, carbs, addictions to those things, oh God. Help those, Lord, that are praying and agreeing with me if they have habits that are destructive to their health. Help them to break those habits. Set them free from a spirit of addiction in any kind, whether it's to nicotine, sugar, carbs, pornography. Father, anything, oh God, the enemy is using to keep them trapped, to hurt their health, to hurt their spirit, help them to break free and trust you to set them free. I thank you, Father, for leading us daily in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content on my channel. My mom yesterday, it was the cutest thing. Uh, she was actually walking for a little bit without her walker, which was great. She was so thrilled and determined to do it. She's still a little bit, there's only a one set of muscles in her body that really need strength. And those are the muscles in the thighs that you use to, um, if you're holding your leg up in the air and you, um, need to resist and not allow somebody to push your leg down. That's the only group of muscles that my mom is really unsteady on, which makes her a little unsteady on her feet, but she was able to do it. And I was so thrilled. She's getting better and better. I told you next week, we're going to try and get her into church with the walker and we'll figure all that stuff out. Um, today is a busy, busy day for me. Um, I only got one Christmas tree down yesterday and that was the one in my granddaughter's room, which is a little four foot tree. And that took me just 10 minutes, but we did clean out a room that was used for storage and it's now set up as a wonderful guest room for someone. So I feel accomplished, but I've got one, two, three, three big Christmas trees to take down today. 
And I just don't pull the stuff off. They all have boxes. A lot of the ornaments have boxes that they have to go in. And it won't take me. It's very relaxing, peaceful, because it's getting things in order. So I enjoy doing it. But it's a lot to do today. We got to get the dining room in order and stuff. So y'all pray for me. But uh, come back and check out some of the other content on my channel. Once I get all the Christmas decor down and get the, the uh, my dining room looking nice for uh, winter, I will do a decorate with me with my snowflake plates and I have a beautiful table runner that my husband and I bought that um, kind of matches what, what they're doing. It's really nice, but I'll do another decorate with me for winter. <laughs> well, God bless you and bye until next time.